Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom. First of all, greetings, Rastafari Chabarim, and also greetings to others and to my fellow Hebrews and also my fellow Israelites. Now, this particular subject matter is one that we have addressed like here and there as we have passed over, to say passed over the topic or the subject of Hebrews. And we've said this before that many of the Hebrew Israelites misunderstand what being Hebrew really, really means, right? And there's a opinion that Hebrew is Hebrew and ethnicity, is Hebrew a race, is being Hebrew an ethnicity, like a kind of a racial identity. Is being Hebrew the same as being Israelite? Thus, many of the latter-day Israelites who have once again rediscovered you know, or seek their identity as being Israelites, call themselves Hebrew Israelites. Now, in listening to many of the conversations regarding Hebrew and Israelite, we keep hearing this confusion. There's a confusion. And a lot of this mixed up with certain, I'll put it like Jewish fables. Jewish fables, for example, what is, what is a Hebrew and who is a Hebrew? Is being Hebrew the same as being an Israelite? Now, most ones would tell you from a Western Gentile, we call it counterfeit Christianity, or we will say um, Ashkenazi Judaism. They will say, well, it's the two terms are synonymous. So you can either call one an Israelite or one call one a, a Hebrew. Others say that Hebrew has to do with Abraham, According to the Bible, it does mention that Abraham or Abram, Abram was the first one in the scriptures, what's known as the Bible or some refer to as the Tanakh or the Hebrew scriptures. We have Abraham, right, a.k.a. Abram, because he had a name change. His first name was Abram, and then with a the new name, it was Abraham. So we have Abram or Abram being one of the first, according to HaTorah, according to the Torah, to be referred to as HaEbri, HaEbri, HaEbri. Some might say it as HaAbri, right? And thus we also get the Haberu, Habiru, Hebrew, Habiru connection. And there's a connection there. Because first of all, where does Hebrew come from? Right, according to the Bible. So let's go to some of the basic. These are some basic points right here. Here in Bereshith, Bereshith, a.k.a. Genesis, Genesis chapter 14, verse 13. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram or Abram, the Hebrew. Now here, when we go to the Masoretic, when we go to the text, we have it as ha Ibri properly pointed as ha, ha is the Hebrew definite article, the, ha, ibri, ha, ibri. Now we say ibri, the i, the i, it's a ayn, ayn, ayn. There's two A sounds in Yehudit, what's called Hebrew. There's two A sounds. One is a soft A sound, one is a hard A sound. One is a a, and one is a a, one is a a, right? We have ayn. Ain or ain, which means not, nothing, ain. And then we have ain, 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 ain is the eye, the, like physical eye to see, ain, right? So in Hebrew, right, here we go right here. We have the ain, the bait, the resh, and the yod, right? And the pointing on the ain is as a i sound, right, a i sound, ibri. Ibri, Ibri, Ibri. Here in the text in Genesis 14, 13, Abraham or Abram is called Ha Ibri, Ha Ibri. Right? Now here the BDB definition brings it out as one from beyond. Right? Here we have it as we have this. This is some of the entry. So we're just going to some of the points of reference that ones can find. We're using the word software. 
others can find in some of the other interlineal Bible softwares out there. We've recommended for years the Blue Letter Bible. And it's good to see many of the Israelites, self-proclaimed Israelites and others studying and getting into more of the roots. So here they say a designation of the patriarchs and the Israelites, right? A noun proper. Here the second entry says a designation of the patriarchs and the Israelites as an adjective. So it's both used in the adjectival sense, like if I say the Hebrew man, right? The Hebrew, the Ibri, right? The Ibri Ish, right? The Hebrew man. Or if we, that's as an adjective, or we say, oh, that Hebrew over there. So that, in that case, it's as a noun, right? They say patronymic, patronymic, right? From the H. 5677. All right, let's just go down here to the Strongs for a moment. So a patronymic from the H5677. Here they say a uh, Eberite or Iberite, uh, Iberite, that is Hebrew or descendant of Eber. Now this is one of the popular misconceptions of Hebrew. Most Hebrew and Israelites and others, and they all say the same thing. What's interesting is that those in uh, Christianity and even some of them in um, European Judaism will say the same thing, say what well, comes from Eber. It's because of Eber, right? And yet we don't have anything significant in the scriptures concerning Eber. What they are finding coming from a, an English perspective, right? They're coming from an English language perspective. This is why one of the gifts of the uh, Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, right, in the upper room of Zion was the gift of tongues, right? And because ones have been reading the English Bible and not really doing the deeper study, we can come to certain misconceptions just based on the English. It's interesting because some words, for example, when it says right here, let's just go back to this right here, it says, and there came one that had escaped and told Abram, right? It said the cross are over, told Abram, the one from beyond, it could have just said that. But in some places in the scripture, they'll put the, the word from the, the Hebrew, right? They'll transliterate it, so to speak, as they do with Hebrew, right? Really is Ibri, Ibri, right? The definite article makes it Ha Ibri. So here is the first proper verse in the Bible, Old Testament or New Testament, but here in the Old Testament, the Brit Yishana, here in the Masoret, the Torah, here in the first book of Torah, Bereshith, called Genesis, Genesis chapter 14, verse 13, all right? And so it says that, told Abraham Ha-Ibri, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshkol, and brother of Anir, and these were confederate with Abram, with Abram. Another very important point right here when we go to the word plain, just to show how things have been somewhat mistranslated or not fully, not fully translated. Here we have the H436. This is the word that links with the word in the plain, the plain. So you see the H436, we click on that, and here the H436, it says Elon. Alon, 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 right? Alon is a tree. Have you noticed that right there? I just want to show you how English only is ruining many of the Hebrew and Israelites' mentality, this English only. Black people in general, you know, especially us, the ones lost now found here in America, is in the Caribbean mentality, right? Deep ending. Even if the King James Version is a good stepping stone, people are stumbling over the stepping stone. Because here we find the word plain is really tree, great tree, terebinth. The secondary they have as plain, but then we go to the Strong's definition, it's an oak tree or other strong tree. This is why it's called the El, the El tree, the Elon, 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 Elone, Elon tree. We get to the root, we have Ayel, 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 right, in the Hebrew, Ayel. And Ayel also refers to Aram, right? Then we go down to the root right here. Let's get to the root. We have Ul, Ul, right? Ul. Now, not to go all into the etymological um, 
details, but you see where the strong says properly strength, ayil. So from ayil we get hail. Like we say, hyla, 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 power of, hyl, hyl, power, ayil, ayila, ayila. Ayila is in the Amharic and Amharic in the Hebrew, both Afro Semitic languages. So this is why there's a lot of good correspondences and it helps us to get a better understanding. So right here, we have this word in the plain of Mamre. He dwelt in the plain. He dwelt in the tree. He dwelt in the tree. He dwelt in the strong tree. The word for plain is sada in the Hebrew. Sada, sada. I sada. Some might say sada, but sada, properly pointed. Sada in Yehudit. Sada, right? Sada in the plain. So I'm pointing that out in the plain because in this very same verse we can see where there's a questionable translation. Right of a particular word, the plain, the word for plain. You know, if we just do this right here, let's just do this right here so ones can see this for themselves. Let's look up plain right here. Not airplane, but like a plain ground. Look at the, look at the word right here. Here's the word plain. Bika, 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 here's valley, right? Plain, there's valley. We have a loan. Notice a loan right here alone to the tree or the trees of moray right we go over here we have the word plain i said sada here we have kirka kirka right so we go down here so you can see where this is actually a circle right in the circle of jordan right the circle of jordan here the plain kirka the circle right the plain right here okay let's get the word sada just to show the people Sada, right? The Sada, that's the same word right there. Let's see if we have it right here. The plains, the plains of Mamre, right? Let's go over here. Throughout all the plain, Kirka. You see the Kirka? Well, you do see the Kirka. Now the Sada, right? Let's see where that word is, Sada. Now this was an hour, okay, okay, we're a plain man. This is a different kind of plain. This is Tom. He was Tom. Right, he was Tom. All right, let's just go a couple of pages up. Let's go a couple of pages up. All right, the plain. And now here's the Araba. Here's Araba. So you can see there's different words for plain. Right, the plain. His 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 Mishor, Mishor. Right, I know that it has Araba. Right, right here, the plains of Moray. Let's go back a couple of verses. Right in the plains. Right, the Araba. Now this is when it was in the wilderness, the Araba. Okay, now they have another word, Sade, right, the Mishor, right, for plain. But you can tell that there are different words just from this rough search right here. Don't want to go too much as ones and ones, some of the good brothers and sisters have reminded us not to go too much and just to ramble, but to bring out this point the best way possible. Let's go a little further up in the scripture. Okay, all oh, this is complaint. Okay, it's Job. No wonder. Job Job has a lot of, well, Psalms do have, they are all plain to him. It's made plain. That's a different plain. Sometimes the word is also field, right? We could have went there as well. Okay, all right. So let's, let's address the, let's address the Hebrew, right? The Araba, we recognize the low plains, right? Um, Shephala, Shephala. So, okay, let's get back to this right here, right? Because not our main, we can do it with Sada and the different words for plain. The point is on Hebrew, right? So, Abram is already being called Abram the Hebrew. Why is Abram identified as the Hebrew? Let's look at the Hebrew right here of the verse right here, the Aleppo. That's the Septuagint right there. All right, let's go down to the Tanakh version. All right down here, here's the Tanakh. All right, it says, Wayabo ha palit wayaged le Abram ha ibri ha ibri. Here it's pointed as the e ibri ha ibri ha ibri ha ibri. Now in the Amharic, it's pointed as ibri ibri. 
here in the Hebrew as Ivri, Ivri, right? The Chirik, you know, the, the long sound, Ivri, Ha Ivri, so a Ivri. Who is a Ha Ivri? Hebri, Hebri, Ha Ivri. So I think that they got the Hebrew thing because of this first mention of Abram as Ha Ivri, Ha Ivri, Ha Ivri, if you say it. Habri, Hebri, Habri, Haibri, Haibri, Hebri, Hebri. That's where the Hebrew comes from in the transliteration, right? So here, Abram, right? Abram, let's extend it to his full name right here. It says, Le Abram, this is the Aleph, Abram Haibri. Abram, or Abraham, was the Hebrew. Why was Abraham the Hebrew? That's a question, right? Why was Abraham, why was he called the Hebrew, right? Why is Abraham called the Hebrew? Note that, check. He's called the Hebrew. He is not called the one from, from, from Eber. If we look at Eber, right? If we look at Eber and we look at Hebrew, we see they're both from the same Afro-Semitic root, you know, the same root, right? They come from the same root. You can have words that come from the same root, but the words are not the same word. It's like children that are born of the same parents, but they're not the same child. You know, those children can be born of the same parents, but not being the same child. Now, some would tell you that, well, Abraham is the Hebrew, right? and here's where the Jewish fable comes in. Some say that Abraham is the Hebrew because he was crossed. He crossed the the uh, uh, the Tigris Euphrates River, right, coming out of Ur of the Castine, Ur of the Castine, or Ur of the Chaldees. Not Chaldees. All y'all who read that's Chaldees. That's incorrect. Is is Chaldees, 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 Chaldees. The Castine is what it's called. So Abraham was in a place called. Or, and he came out of that place, right? And he crossed over the, the rivers. The rivers is the, is the Tigris, Euphrates, River Valley. And some say, this is what the popular Christianity, popular Latter-day Ashkenazi-influenced Judaism says that, well, Abraham and a lot of the black Hebrew and the Hebrew Israelites, they say the same thing. They say, well, it's because Abraham cross this river and when he crossed that river he was across the over because when we get into well what is the roots right what is the roots of hebrew let's go back to this right here right bring up the ibri ibri one from beyond right and then we scroll it down right here right and now here's where the kind of false link is being made with the eberite they're trying to say well he's a hebrew because he's a descendant of eber because we can find Eber, Eber in the lineage of Abram. We say that's incorrect, that's false, and it seems to be like a modern day kind of a Jewish fable. It seems to be a Christian fable, because a lot of the Christian commentators say the same thing. So if you hear that Abraham is, was called Abraham because he crossed a river, that's why he's called Abraham. They are falling short of the 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 more the, the, the spiritual meaning, right? We're gonna put this in Brit Khadasha terms, the spiritual meaning, and the Brit Khadasha from the Brit Shana. And it was a new covenant speech from the Old Testament, because the new covenant is really first found in the Old Testament, just to point that out. Right? But let's go to the H fifty six seventy seven. Here we have Eber, right? Eber, right, or Abar. Actually, we have Abar. Let's scroll down here. Abar. Okay, no. It's going down to this root here. Eber, right? Eber. Okay, so let's first address this right here. So now, here they are pointing the link according to Strong's Concordance, which is a very useful tool, but not always right and accurate in every sense. We're saying that here it's not right and accurate. Here they say Eber, 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 right? Eber or Heber the region beyond. Then they say, well, son of Salah, 
the great grandson of Shem, father of Peleg and Joktan. Also, there was a Gadite of the tribe of Gad. There was a Benjamite, son of El Pa'al, right, descendant of uh, Sharahaim. And then we have a Benjamite, son of Shashak, and a priest in the days of Joachim, and the son, the son of Yeshua. Interesting, the son of Yeshua, right? So here, let's go to the Strong. Strong's is now, so here they're pointing to the patriarch. So some believe that, well, he is a Hebrew because he is a descendant of Eber. Right? This is the popular fable. This is what's popularly taught. So in that sense, it would make it out to be an ethnicity or ones might say a race or even tribal kind of a thing, right? But we say that's not the root. That's not the real reason that Abram is called Ha-Ibri, right? Here we go to the age 5676. Now here they say region beyond or across or side, region across or beyond, side, opposite side, all right? Now, what's interesting is that when you start to really read the Hebrew scriptures, read and study the Hebrew scriptures, we find the same root word, abar, abar. We have abar, abara, abre, right? We have this being used as a verb, always in the sense of one who is kind of crossing over, going over, crossing over, right? You know, the people crossing over. It, it, it's, it's a verb that has the sense of going over, crossing over, going to the opposite side, right? So in one sense, we could say that, yeah, Abram could be called Ha'ibri because he had cross over out of Ur of the Chaldees. But the question now comes in, why did Abram cross over from Babylon or Ur or of the Kasdim of the Chaldees? Why did he cross over? Anyone knows that particular, the Book of Jubilees, right? Metzafi Kufale goes into that. Does anyone know that? And this is very well known as a very ancient narrative right here, 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 that Abram, right, he was born into a time and a region where people were worshiping, you know, false spirituality, false pseudo-spirituality, pseudo-religion, basically idolatry in a time of gross idolatry where people were worshiping um, pseudo-gods, pseudo counterfeit trinities, false deities, you know, idolatry, statues, ancestors, you know, like the spirituality that most people talk about today is almost the same thing nowadays. You say, I'm, I'm spiritual. Well, well, evil is spiritual too. Evil is a spirit, right? It doesn't mean that you're in the spirit of truth, right? The lie is a spirit, you know what I mean? False spirits, lying spirits, so, so be careful of thinking that, saying that, well, you're not into religion, you're into spirituality, right? Because, you know, because one is into religion doesn't mean that they are in the false religion. They may be in the true religion. I mean, even the Bible talks about true religion. We can go there. But right here, we're pointing to the roots of Hebrew, right? The roots of Hebrew. Now, here we go. Here we get to the root. Abar, Abar. Now we have Eber, 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 the name of the man. We have Ibri, Ibri, Ha Ibri, in reference to Abraham. All right? There's a, a, a Hebrew, Hebraically, according to the language Yehudi, there's a principle that's known as the law of two truths. Basically, this means that words, words have like a twofold, a duality sense. Mm-hmm. Let that sink in for a moment, right? Here to pass over, or by, or through, to alienate, to bring, to carry, to do away, to take, to take away. It can also mean in the context of transgress. The kal, right, the basic form of the, the, the bin yanim, of the patterns, right, conjugational patterns of the Hebrew is to pass over the cross, to cross over the pass over, the march over, the overflow, to go over, to pass beyond. This is what Abraham did, spiritually speaking. 
So our main point is to say that being Hebrew has to do with the spirituality, not with the ethnicity, not with the race. So we can say that although all, um, how can we say, can we say all Hebrews, right? or rather all Israelites are not Hebrews. Let's point that out. All Israelites are not Hebrews. And we can follow this through from the Old Covenant Scriptures, even into the New Covenant Scriptures, the Brit Chadasha. You can follow straight through, to pass beyond, to pass through, to traverse, to pass her, a passer through, passer through, right? Pass along. And that's part that's interesting there, which is the parts of victim and covenant. It's interesting because when um, Adonai Yahweh, um, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, came to Abram and made a covenant with Abram, it actually uses that word within what was going on, how how Hashem passed through the pieces of the, like, pass by, right? That sense to pass by, to be passed, to pass over. So the idea, you see what says immigrate? So in the physical sense, right, in the natural sense, yes, Abram could be called Ha'ibri because he, he immigrated from Ur of the Chaldees. Basically, he came out of Babylon, to say. He came out of Babylon, came out of confusion. But what enabled him to come out of confusion physically, physically to get up and to go when he was told, lek leka, lek leka, go for yourself, go for yourself. When he was told to do that, I think it's Genesis chapter, would that be chapter 12, roughly around Genesis, yeah, I think around, about Genesis chapter 12 or so, yes? Mm -hmm. So he left his, 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 his father's, uh, country, his, his land of his nativity, and he went forth with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be he of Yahuwah. Right? He went forward with Jehovah because he had already passed from idolatry to the true reality right, of the Almighty. See, that's the first true meaning of Hebrew. This is why we say that Hebrew refers to the spirituality. Hebrew refers to the spirituality of Israel, of Yisrael, of Yasharel, right? of Yisrael. Right? Hebrew refers to the spirituality. Right? And then right here, you can see it has other forms to be crossed, to impregnate, to, to cause to cross over, to bring over to cross over. So he, he crossed over from the false beliefs, the false faith, the false uh, um, theology, if you want to put it like that, but the false belief, the, 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 the false religion. He came out of counterfeit religion, the counterfeit faith, the counterfeit belief system. Right? And this empowered him right, then to pick up with his family and to come out of the place. See, this is one of the reasons why the lost sheep can't come out of Babylon the way they should come out of Babylon, right? It's like the old saying that you can take this one out of, you know, well, some would say, you know, you could take the N-word out of, out of Babylon, but how about taking the Babylon out of the N-word, so to speak? So you see right here in the Strong's definition makes it even a little more clear. It's a primitive root, abar, 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 to cross over. So he crossed over. Right in his spirit and his psyche and his soul, his nefesh, he crossed over in his spirit, and this enabled him to cross over in his body. In other words, to physically do the thing. Right? It's like at first it begins in the innermost of the innocence. First it must begin in the heart and the mind. Right? So his heart and his mind was already alienated from the false beliefs of his father, of his patriarchs, of other people who lived around him, friends, whoever. Right? He was not believing or accepting the truth to be the lie that the others believed. And he, already, he was already a Hebrew. So when it says right here that Abram, the Hebrew, this is what the Bible, what the scriptures, what Torah says. There's a popular fable that circulated that it was the Phoenicians. Some would tell you that it was the Phoenicians. 
right? Some would say that it was the Phoenicians, right? Let's go right here. Some would say that it was the Phoenician, speaking of Avram, to use as a placeholder, that it was the Phoenicians who had seen Abraham crossing the Tigris Euphrates River and said, hey, there's Abraham Ha Ibri. Ha Ibri. No, that's not how it happened. That's a fable. That's something that has been passed along. And maybe the Phoenicians did see this. Maybe they didn't see this. What we know is what we have in Moshe's first book, what we have in Bereshith. Right, that one who had escaped had told it to Abram Ha Ibri. Question is this: Why was he called Ha Ibri? Why was Abram called Ha Ibri, the Ibri, the crosser over, the transitioner, the crosser over? Right? Is it just because? See, on the natural level, the natural level, those who don't have that spiritual, the spiritual sight, right, that true spiritual sight, we notice that everywhere in the scripts that it refers to Hebrew, the majority of places, is not the people referring to themselves as Hebrews, but it's others. Have you noticed that too? It's others. I think we come to the New Testament with Rav, uh, Rabbi Saul, Shaul, right, who's called the Apostle Paulus, Paul, who says, are they Hebrews? Well, so am I. Right? You know, it was, are they of this spirituality, the true spirituality of the Israelites? Like it says, not all who are of Israel are Israel. It says, not all who are of Israel are Israel because the true Israel in Hashem, in the name, in HaKadosh, Baruch Hu, Baruch Hashem site, and the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name site, are those who have the same spiritual faith of Abram HaIbri. Of Abraham Ha Ibri. Right? They're the same ones. There's another part in this verse right here. Let's go through this right here to bring over why right? he went beyond the false beliefs that he was raised up in and had crossed over because of that faith. Right? He crossed over because of that faith. Baal Barit. You see, he was Confederate. He was Baal. Right? He was the husband. He was the owner, the Lord. Right? He was Baal. Baal. Now, uh, even the word Baal is an interesting word. A lot of people say, oh, that's the Canaanite God. That's the Phoenician God. Yes. They had one of their high deities called Baal. But Baal in the linguistics and the language of that region, right? For us, the Yehudi called Hebrew, Baal is a title for husband. It's a title for husband, a husband, a husband, a citizen, a husband, a ruler, a lord, a husband. It's just a title for husband. So it's like we have a word called husband, and then we find some people in their religion, their high God is called husband. They call God husband. You know what I'm saying? That's what happened with the word Baal. But once when you're coming from an English and a counterfeit Christian perspective, you begin to over-exaggerate certain points and it throws off your whole doctrine, your whole teaching, you know? And then when you get to real points of putting it, you know, putting the word into effect, you, you, you stumble, right? Because in other words, it's, it's, it's not rightly sorted out. So in order to rightly sort it out right here, right? So he was Baal Barit. It said these were Baal Barit, right? They were, they were in covenant, they were in covenant with Abram, which means that they accepted his true faith. They accepted his faith. They were like-minded, as you would say, like-minded in the sense, you know, that Abram worshipped and knew and had the knowledge of Ha Elohim, Ha Elohim, Ha Elohim, of the power, the true good, the true God, Yahweh. Right? Yahuwah, Yahweh, Hashem. Right? Now, if we look at other places in the scripture, right, like right here, um, the the Memphite woman, the woman from Memphis, right, or Egypt, ancient Egypt, no right? It says that she called to the men of her house and spake to them, saying, See, look, he hath brought in an Hebrew, right? And Hebrew, uh, Ibri Ish. Uh, Ibri, uh, Ibri, right? We have the Ibri, 
Ibri, Ibri, Hebrew Ish. Now, why was Joseph called a Hebrew? Was it because racially he stood out so much different than the other melanated Kemites and, and, and Mitzrayim and Egyptians? No, because his faith was um, conspicuous, right? The faith of a Hebrew is conspicuous. It's like with Abraham, right? Abraham, right? His faith was conspicuous. He stood out like a sore thumb, right? He was, a, he was amongst them, like amongst them, like in the world, not of the world, right? And he came out of that world, right? He crossed over out of that world because he had already crossed over out of that world in heart and mind in what we would say his spirituality, right? And then right here, she goes on to speak more. The Hebrew servant, the Hebrew, why is it calling him a Hebrew? Ha-ibri, habri, 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 habru, habri, habri. And then here we have um, Yosef, Yawasaf, Yosef saying, for indeed I was stolen out of the land of the Hebrews. Now remember, Joseph was just 17 years old. He's still a very young man, you know, somewhat sheltered with the rest of his, 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 his tight family, tight-knit family. So he referred to that land, the land of the Hebrews, because of his great ancestor, the Hebrew, right? See, the significance of what Abram, right, brought into the consciousness of the world is... is that needs, it needs a reason on that by itself. And then they say, a young man, a Hebrew. Why do you think the pharaohs, the, the Paro, right? the Sutanet, Sutanbat, the, the king, the pharaoh of Egypt at the time of Joseph, his ears peaked up when he said, a Hebrew? Because he's in that real spirituality. He's in the true spirituality, right? the true spirituality. So calling one a Hebrew referred to their faith. Right? And then right here is another interesting point in Genesis 43, 32. And they set on for him by himself, for Joseph, and for them by themselves, his brothers, and for the Mitzrayim, the Egyptians, which did eat with him. So the Egyptians, the Mitzrayim, they ate, get this, they ate with Joseph. But you have to remember that Joseph, he shaved up his head. Right, he shaved himself, his face. He began to take on the customs of the land that now he's a ruler. Ha'ish, he's a ruler in this particular land. Right? So the earlier narrative concerning when he was in Potiphar's house and the men fight woman, accused him, falsely accused him of rape, and then he was brought before the king before he was raised up into this office. So for most of the Mitzrayim, the Egyptians... Notice, he's not being called a Hebrew now. Why? Because on the outer level, right, Joseph, once he shaved and, and he didn't have the beard, didn't have the, the locks, so forth and so on, he could pass for one of the Egyptians because, you know, the Israelites, black, and the Egyptians, black people. So he could pass for one of them, right? But now culturally and in the position of power that he's in, they're taking him as a as a, as a as a commit to you a mitzri as an Egyptian. Note what this verse says. And they set on for him by himself and for them by themselves and for the Egyptians, which they eat with him. So he Joseph was eating with the Egyptians because now Zafnat Paanki Paneach Paneach Paneank in the in the Torah in Genesis is actually the word Ank. Is actually the word Ank. We have the word Ank also within the Hebrew Torah. And remember that your brother in Ras, Yadin, Yadin tell you so. And I showed you before, we'll show you again, but that's Joseph's name. Safnat Pa'anki, Pa'anki, Paneach. Some say Paneach, Paneach, Pa'ank, Pa'ank, Safnat. So for a name like Safnat Pa'ank, you know, well, of course they're going to take him. They're going to take him as a Hebrew because the Hebrews are Hebrews. The Hebrews have their own faith. They have their own belief. Remember Abraham? Remember Abraham? They know who Abraham was, right? But what's the reason why they set two different um, tables? Like, like, like the Egyptians, the Mitzrayim, are, are eating with Safnat Pa'anki, a.k.a. with Yosef, Joseph, right? Joseph in disguise, 
right? And his brothers, right, the, the B'nai Yisrael, are eating by themselves. Here it tells us because, right, the reason why is right there, because, because the Egyptians, the Mitzrayim, might not eat bread with the Hebrews. Uh-oh, why they're not eating bread? For that is an abomination to the Mitzrayim. Now we know that something as an abomination, a to'eba, right? A to'eba, abomination, doesn't that have something to do with religion or, or someone's faith in that sense? It's a faith base. We could say it's a faith base judgment. Here's, here's what it says right here it says, Kilo, you kolun, Kilo, for no, you kolun to eat. Ha Mitzrim, the Mitzrim, the Egyptians, le a call, le a call to eat et ha ibrim, et ha ibrim, lechem, right, to eat bread, right, with the Hebrews. Because, you know, breaking bread, eating bread, remember Melchizedek, uh, Melchizedek, breaking bread, eating bread. Bread has a significance also in a kind of religious, spiritual, and ancient rites and rituals. It says, Kia to eva, he le mitzrayim, because it's a to eva. It was an abomination for them to sit up together and to eat together. But notice, Joseph is eating. Note that Joseph is eating because Joseph is called what? He's not called by Yosef, he's called by Safnat Paank, Paank, Paanki. He's called Safnat, the revealer of secret things, the preserver of life. Safnat Paanki. Right? Here it says the king of Egypt spake to the who? The Hebrew midwives. Why? Because they were different in their customs, and their customs was based on this strong, we could say, religious spirituality that links with Abraham Ha'ibri. Abraham the Hebrew. Notice when Abraham was going around to different places, he said he didn't think there's no righteous man. There was no righteous people. Why do you tell me that she's your, she's your sister, not your wife? Well, I didn't think that there was any righteous people around here. Note that right there. He was looking for a righteous city and righteous people. So in seeing how they went about, he probably saw the same signs Right, of false religion, false faith, uh, counterfeit trinities, where he was at, and this is one of the reasons why he took precautions. See, I'm trying to paint the picture right here, give more of the details that we should be studying and getting out of the scripture instead of just going to a verse here and not being able to see the verse in this, in this scriptural context. Take the subtext in the context of the supertext. Here we have Exodus Shemot 1 and 15. So the king of Mitzrayim spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was Shifra and the name of the other was Pua. Right? So these were Hebrew midwives. And then what they say in verse 16, right? it says, and he said, when y'all do the office to the, the office of the midwives to the Hebrew woman, and see them upon the stools, the birthing stools, you know, the squatting position. If it be a son, then you shall dead on him. You shall kill him, right? You shall kill him, moot, to die, to dead on him, right? You shall dead on him, right? You shall cause him to die. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live, right? They got a lot of genocidal overtones right there. But here's what the midwife said here, verse 19. And the midwife said to Paro, because the Hebrew, the Ibrit, right, the Ibri, Ibrit woman are not as the Mitzrayim woman. Now, what's the, what's the major difference between the Hebrews and the Mitzrayim? Was it not their faith, their spirituality? We could say their religion or religions, right? For they are lively and are delivered ere the midwife come in to them. So the Hebrew woman... You know, they didn't wait for the midwife to come when, when the water broke and, 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 and it was time, it was time, and they took care of the business. So by the time the midwife came, they came kind of as, as like relief, in a sense. They, they didn't have to really do the work. The woman themselves, in the pain, the water broke, they took care of business to bring forward that Hebrew child. Right. So now notice this right here. This in Exodus Shemot 2 and 6, this is... This is um, 
This is uh, Pharaoh's daughter, right, who we see as Hashepsu in the historical narrative. And when she had opened it, the, the, the basket, right, she saw the child and behold, the babe wept and she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews children. Note how many places I'm pointing to you and it's always others that are referring to us in this way. The, the testimonies we have, we have Pharaoh, the king, right? The Sutin Bat, Sutin Net, he is saying that. We have here, we have the daughter of, of Pharaoh, who we see as Hatshepsut. She's saying that concerning Moshe. He is one of the Hebrews. How does she know he's one of the Hebrews? Because no doubt, when she looked at him, she said, oh, he, he's circumcised. You know, look, look, look at that right there. No doubt she was able to recognize by some of those marks on the Hebrew because of the spirituality that links with the patriarch Abraham Ha'ibri, right? And then right here, his sister, Miriam, she says to Pharaoh's daughter, who we see as Hatshepsut, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew? Notice this, of the Hebrew woman, right? Notice in none of these places is saying Israel as of yet, that she may nurse the child for thee, right? And then here in Shemot 2.11, it came to pass in those days when Moshe was grown, that he went out to his brethren. So though he grew up among the Mitzrayim, he knew he was an Ibri, right? He knew he was a Hebrew, right? Went to his brethren and looked on their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian, a Mitzri, smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. Right? And it says, and when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? Now, if you read this part, you know this part. His own brothers were about to snitch on him. Now, this shows that even among the Hebrews, it's like one say, I'm Messianic. Or one say, you know, um... You know, I'm an Israelite. I believe in Yahweh. You know what I mean? But then sometimes they might not be doing those things. They're going against those principles right, of the faith. Right? For these Hebrews there to want to snitch on Moshe, since Moshe right, came out the big house to identify, to, to link up with his brethren, you see that there was on some jealousy. So even here we have the Hebrew term referring to the spirituality of a set of people. Now, true, most of the people who were Hebrews, right, were, the, not most, but the, the great majority, the original Hebrews, in that sense, are referring to those who are of Israel, right, because of Abraham, that patriarch, right? We're going to get one more verse right here, and then you see something very interesting here when we come to 318. And they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt come, Thou and the elders of Israel to the king of Egypt, Mitzrayim, and say to him, Yahuwah Elohei, Ibrim, Ibrim, right? That he who be who he be, the power of the Hebrews hath met with us. Notice the identification here. It's not identifying him as Jehovah, the power of Israel, as, as of yet, because he's still in Mitzrayim. And he met with us. And let, and now let us go, we beseech thee, three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to Yahuwah Eloheinu, to Jehovah our Elohim. So now we see where it's now crystallizing and becoming over, right, that the Hebrews have a different power than the Mitzrayim. You say a different power, right, you say divinity, right, than the Mitzrayim. Right? And he identifies himself with the Ibrim, with the Hebrews. This is why when you see in the earlier part of Exodus, it says the people. It speaks of the people of the children of Israel. When it says the people of the children of Israel, there were other peoples who were coming to the acknowledgement of the, the truth of the faith of the Hebrews. That the Hebrews' faith in Yahuwah, the Elohim, Right? They recognized that it was true. This is why you have some mixed multitudes that also came out with the Hebrews. I mean, with the Israelites, because many of them, in, in a spirituality sense, they were Hebrews too. 
This is why the Epistle to the Hebrews in the New Testament is a very important book. All right. Now, over here, here's some interesting memes. This person says, Hebrew means to cross over. I am a Hebrew. I'm a Hebrew because I've crossed over from man-made traditions and lies into scriptural truth. Yahuwah, Yahweh, Yahweh, Hayes, Torah. Now, this right here is, is very much on, on mark right here. This is very much on mark. This is pointing to the spirituality, the spirituality crossing over. Because you could be an Israelite. And you still are in so-called man-made traditions and lies. All right. Now, this one right here, we're going to return to this because a lot of people try to make the, the Canaanites Hebrew. The Canaanites are not Hebrews unless a particular Canaanite was in the spirituality of the Hebrew. The Canaanites as a people, they were not Hebrews per se. All right. Now, I, I want to touch on this right here, this chart. Um, I want to keep this within the hour, right? Here we have this chart, and you can see where it says Hebrew, Israelites, and Jews. Let that sink in. Tell me what is right about it, and tell me what is wrong about it. Mm -hmm. What is right about it, and what is wrong about it? Okay. When it says Jews, let's go from the right-hand side. When it says Jews, Yehudi, Yehudim, Yehuda, and Binyamin, Yes, that's correct. Especially when we get come to like the New Testament area, when it says Jews in the scripture, mainly speaking about the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and the Levites. All right, but remember the Levites were not in the count in that sense. So we say the Yehuda Jews, they were Judah and Benjamin, mm -hmm, a portion of Levi as well. The Israelites. Here they say twelve tribes in Canaan. No, the Israelites actually became a nation in the wilderness. So that's incorrect there. They were not 12 tribes. They were 12 tribes in Canaan, but they became known as the Israelites when they were at Bamidbar, when they were in the wilderness. All right? That's when they became a nation. Notice that they went from being a people, like a family. We could say that the Israelites, the those who were descendants of the patriarch, Yaakob, Yaakob, Aher, Jacob, Israel, would be part of the um, the royalty, right, of the nation. They would be like the royalty of the nation. They would be like that monarchy as well as from them, the priests and the and the central institutions of government based on how Torah must be and was called to be governed and operated according to Yahweh Hayes instructions given to Moshe in HaTorah. Now, the part that's incorrect is over here, all right? Let's deal with this part over here. This is the part that's incorrect, all right? This is the part that's incorrect. Let's just keep it center right there. The part that's incorrect is Edomites. Edomites are not Hebrews. Now, if you believe that being Hebrew is somehow a race, you are in error because it's clear that Edom the Edomites, Esau, if Esau was a real Hebrew, he would not have sold his birthright and he would not have lost his blessing. If Esau was a Hebrew, if Esau was a Hebrew, he'll cross over. He'd be like, you, you got to miss me with that. You keep, you keep your food, Jake. You know, I'm going to go make something. That, that's what he would have done. I ain't selling my birthright. Even if I'm going to die, I ain't going to sell my birthright. Right? Because no doubt he would have had children or something. You know what I'm saying? But he was not a Hebrew. He was not in that spirituality, right? Yes, he descends from Abraham, right? But he's one of the broken branches. You could say one of the broken branches in that sense. You know what I mean? Jacob, right? And Jacob, right, was his brother. Jacob was the Hebrew. Edom, Esau, was not the Hebrew. Ishmaelites, Right now, could there be some Edomites that 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 had faith? Yeah, there could be some individual in, e, Edomites that had faith. And if we study the scripture, we'll find the Ark of the Covenant was at the place called Obed Edom, the servant of Edom, and you know, and they have Doeg and others. So, technically speaking, since Hebrew refers to spirituality, in a sense, Hebrew referred to. I, I, I caution myself to say this, but but the religion, or better, the, the, the faith, the living faith, the living faith of the Israelites could be called the, the Hebrew element. That's why Avram is called Ha 
Ibri. How about the Ishmaelites? Were the Ishmaelites Hebrews? The Ishmaelites were influenced by Hebrews, yeah, but the Ishmaelites were not Hebrews. Ishmaelites were not Hebrews, right, unless the Ishmaelites believed, right, in the true God of Israel, the true power of Israel. If they believed in the true power of Israel, right, if they, if they were, you could say, circumcised and had come into the covenant, right, and kept the covenant with the Israelites, yes. But by and large, Ishmaelites are not Hebrews. Medeanites. Now, Medeanites is an interesting one because we had Jethro. Remember Jethro? He's the father of the seven, he has seven daughters, and one of his daughters, uh, Sipora, Sipora, married Moshe, and he was a priest of Median. And then we we'll read through the Torah, right? In, in Exodus, we hear him, he blessed Yahuwah, he blessed Jehovah, he brought forth a sacrifice that the elders of Israel had eaten, so forth and so on. So he was a priest, he was a Hebrew priest. See, Jethro, the early Medeanites, displayed more of the Hebrew faith. The early Medeanites, like Jethro, right? And we could point to the Torah to say that Jethro was a Hebrew, but Jethro was not an Israelite. He was a Medeanite. How about the Moabites and the Ammonites? And the Moabites and Ammonites are put on this list of Hebrew. This is where you have a lot of faulty, counterfeit Christian um, scholarship that confuse people. Because nobody wants to tell the people the truth. Well, they don't want to, but we seek to tell you the truth that Moabites and the Ammonites are not Hebrews, by and large. By and large. There's exceptions to the rule. There's a rule and there's exception. The exception, the Moabites, we have um, Herut. Herut or Ruth. Notice Ruth. Ruth rejected the God and the customs and religion and belief systems of her people. And she claved to Naomi. Well, I said, your God will be my God. Boom. That made her a Hebrew. That made her a Hebrew. But the majority of Moabites did not have that same faith. They worshiped Chemosh. Chemosh. All right? They worshiped Chemosh. Not Chemos, but Chemosh. How about the Ammonites? The Ammonites. The Ammonites and the Moabites are the children of Lot's incest or the incest of Lot's daughters. Remember Lot's daughters after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah? They were hiding out in the cave and the daughters thought they were the last people around and they wanted to raise up seed to their father. So one got the father drunk one night, slept with him, had a child. Next one got the father drunk the next night or some nights after, whether it was the next consecutive night or not. But after that, you know, the next one got, you know, with child and one child was Moab and one was Bain. Right, was 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 Ben Ami, Ben um, um, the Ammonites. So the Ammonites and the Moabites come from Lot. Now, yes, Lot and Abraham are associated in the narrative, but check this: Lot is Abraham's nephew. Lot is Abraham's nephew, not his son. So Lot was in the presence of Abraham Ha Ebri. So no doubt he must have witness what the true faith and one who's of the true faith, you know, believed and how they went about. But it seems as though his children, you know, did their own thing. His children did their own thing. So they're not Hebrews either, right? They make it seem like, well, they all are linked to Abraham. Yeah, but so are the Egyptians linked to Abraham too, right? Abimelech linked to Abraham. Doesn't make him you know, necessarily a Hebrew, we even find that some of them might have been Hebrews too. Because remember the one, I think it was Abimelech, where Hilahim, the Elohim came to visit him in the dream to tell him about Abraham's wife, Sarah, right, the matriarch. And um, he was like, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know it was this man's wife. I did this all innocently. Please don't like destroy me and my people because of this. And, and Hilahim, you know, the power, the angel said, no, we're not going to destroy you. This is why I came to you because I know that you are righteous. You, you're seeking to do the right thing. So we might even say that he displays, right, both the, the, the manner of the Hebrews. He, he displays the character of the Hebrews. The, the, the faith, right, in his spirit and in his soul and his psyche. He didn't want to do anything wrong. And the Holy One, blessed be he, blessed be the name, 
right? And the Holy One came and spoke to him and communicated directly to him. We don't find that in just every old case, right, amongst other nations. There are certain ones who are of other nations, and this is what it means that he is not partial, but even others of other nations that he finds to be righteous, you know, because they, in spirit and truth, have crossed over to. They have crossed over from the false beliefs to the true, right, to the true faith, right? So here, 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 who's a Hebrew, right? Who's a Hebrew? Right? Many of the Hebrew Israelites, like not all, not all Israelites are Hebrews. Hebrew has to do with the spirituality of Israel, the true spirituality of Israel. Right? That's why it says that um, not all who are of Israel are Israel. Right? It speaks about that remnant, that remnant that shall be saved, that, that remnant that speaks to is that remnant who truly are Hebrew in spirit and in truth, right? according to the true teaching. Right? Give us a teaching. In, in Hebrew, the word Talmud right, is teaching and Talmud. Talmud is disciple. So don't get it twisted because some Babylonian Talmud and some things that are here or there. Like, give us a teaching, the real teaching. Right? Not every teaching is could be good teaching or, 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 or consistent teaching the Torah. But what we're teaching you here is consistent with it. And as you look over it for yourself, like, look, Paul right, was of the tribe of Benjamin. Right? Paul was a Hebrew. Paul was an Israelite. Paul was a Jew. Now, each of these are descriptives, but we have to understand what is the relationship of each of these descriptions, right? Each of these descriptions, right? Paul was a Benjamite because he was of that tribe. He was a Hebrew because he was of the true faith of Abraham, that, that links with Abraham, the patriarch of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that Hebrew trinity, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the power, the Hilehim, the Elohim, right? the source of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was an Israelite because the Benjamites are one of the 12 tribes of Israel, so he's an Israelite. He's a Yehudi. Now, here's the key thing. He's a Yehudi because the Judahites were like the last of the Jedis. If, if you recognize. In fact, the language, the Hebrew language more correctly is called Yehudit, right? The particular dialect that we have preserved from the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, even with the pointing, the Nikudat, right? Is basically Yehudit, is basically what was called Yehudit. So here, 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 let's go over here, right? This is probably one of the best kind of explain, is a little typo there with cross, crust. Right? But still, the, the sense of it crossed over, right? crossed over from false faith to the true faith, has crossed over, transcended, right? the, the cross over. There's another word that is used um, as well, um, but uh, like, like almost like transcendental, but not to get too spook out or whatever. But Hebrew, ha-ibri, ha-ibri, that refers to... Hebrew, being Hebrew is not an ethnicity, it's not a race in that sense. It's not fleshy. That's what we're trying to say. It's not fleshy. Now, other peoples, including the Philistines and others, they often identified the Israelites as Hebrews. We have that in the scriptures. In, in the 50 or so different quotes, we have Hebrews in the scriptures, Old and New Testament. Right? The Philistines referred to the Israelites as Hebrews. Why? Because it has to do with the, 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 the religious spiritual warfare, the warfare between the worshipers of the true power and the worshipers of the false powers or the, the true trinity worshipers, right? The power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and those who are worshiping other, other deities, gods, ideologies, idolatries, or whatever, so that's why they looked at us. They said, these people think they've crossed over. Like they're on some higher level. Because the truth of the matter is that we be on a higher level. Yes, I, Rastafari. So here, here, here. Look more and more to come. Give thanks.